Hello, everyone. I'm Joshua Wilson with America's Warrior Partnership Corporate Veteran Initiative. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're just having a casual interview between veterans like we've been doing on all the previous segments. And I'm here with Scott Baldwin in Indianapolis, Indiana with Envoy. And uh, I appreciate you for doing this. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your military service? Sure. Thanks for uh, spending some time with me, Joshua. Um, my name's Scott, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm a former Marine, always a Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine, right? <laughs> Third Battalion, 5th Marines. I was in a variety of uh, roles there, state platoon, spent a lot of time there. I was a calm man of, to start with, 2531, and, uh, and then ultimately ended up with a couple secondary MOSs. Uh, got a chance to travel on a, on a West PAC and East PAC and um, ultimately um, uh, spent uh, about five years and 10 months before I EAS with a couple months of terminal leave. Um, right before I left, I was with uh, 310 for the last six months of, of my, I uh, had a transfer. My wife uh, had some issues and, and so I had a transfer uh, right before I got out. But uh, Marine Corps was good to me. Um, learned a lot while I was in the Marine Corps. I enlisted in a period of time where it was weird. It was in 1985, and I enlisted in a month where it was the very end of the Veterans Educational Assistance Program and the beginning of the new Montgomery GI Bill. And um, I'm not going to say my recruiter was less than honest. I'm just going to say that I was probably void of uh, maybe some parental guidance and military guidance, and I ended up... Um, not opting for, well, they didn't provide the option at the time for um, any kind of educational assistance. And I, you know, I was a straight A student at school, but, but was broke. Um, and uh, so I, I originally went in as an 84 day split reservist, thinking I was going to have money for Indiana University, but uh, quickly learned that that, that wasn't the case and um, had to augment to active duty immediately um after my first semester because i just ran out of money and then i was on active duty in three five and my gunny came to me and he presented a piece of paper and the manner in which he presented it was um hey i need you to sign this baldwin um so they don't take money out of your check every month and i thought well gee i i don't want them taking money why would they take money on my check gunny just sign this form you know so i signed the form and now that form i know and i was 17 I may have been 18 at that point. Um, I, I signed a declination of the new Montgomery GI Bill, which would have been hyper cheap and would have been life changing from an educational perspective. And uh, so I went through, you know, six years of, of uh, America's Greatest Gun Club and didn't emerge with any educational benefits from it. I have those now through being a disabled veteran, but uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it was just you know, as a young Marine, I didn't, I didn't have that, um, I didn't have that guidance. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, a time when, um, you, you know, was, that I, I, I would like to think that doesn't happen these days. Yeah, I, I when I, when I got out of the Marine Corps, um, you know, we had had a humanitarian discharge, even though it was right at the end of my uh, terminal leave there um, because of an incident. Um, and my, my wife had been raped, and um, uh, it was just a set of circumstances. You know, I'm truly blessed the Marine Corps helped me through um, and um, provided that humanitarian transfer right at the very end of my enlistment um, from the West Coast to the East Coast. And uh, um, <clears throat> uh, I got out, and you know, I was left with you know no education. You know, there's not a lot of people looking for infantrymen um, or or field radio operators, and so you know, like a lot of Marines, I ended up, you know, you've got a very um, abrasive background that you've you've been um, through a, a lot as it relates to figuring things out on your own. You know, you've talked about sitting in the birthing compartment of a ship and being told that you need to pack your trash because you're going to war. Um, you, you learn how to live out of a sea bag, you, you know, and so 
What I did have, and I really didn't recognize, and I think a lot of mentorship these days is to point out to young Marines or transitioning Marines what they really do have. And, and what they have is a tenacity and ability to work through um, almost anything in life. Um, and I find that uh, uh, Marine, transitioning Marines oftentimes don't think that they have um, uh, skills and as an employer now, I recognize that, gosh, I don't care any, I don't care what kind of a degree you have. If you were in the Marine Corps and you've been able to live through, just drop your stuff, you're going to do this now. I know we've been for four months planning to do this, but we're going in a different direction now. Pack your trash. You've got everything in your life fitting into one or two sea bags. Make it happen. Do it now. And, uh, and that's a, that's a skill set that's really hard to put your finger on and, and quantify you know, but, but, uh, hiring Marines for me, is always, that's, that's always worked out. We've been able to, to do well. Um, and, uh, so, so for me, the next step, uh, you know, I'm sitting there with no college education. Um, and, you know, I had the Marine Corps behind me and, and a DD 214 and a positive attitude. Um, so I ended up like a lot of Marines in that abrasive, you know, I worked at a prison. I worked at the Indiana reformatory and, um, helped them create their first special emergency response team, and then was picked up by the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department and rose through the ranks there a little bit. So I started a business on the side selling real estate and uh, something that didn't necessarily need that college degree, you know, and uh, and then used that Marine Corps can do get her done attitude to kind of manipulate that career path to a point where it was making more money than the police department. It was making more money part time than the police department was paying me full time. And at that point, I had been Metro Drug Task Force, Homicide. A variety of things just trying to scratch that cerebral and financial itch to be honest with you and and so that that turned into a burgeoning real estate firm we ended up i think with as many as 75 real estate brokers that worked for us and i ultimately bought a real estate i i, I bought a construction management firm and started doing real estate development and that's sort of where i'm at today how about your first real estate transaction how did you square that up um, I started collecting real estate commission checks for, you know, I think some of my first were big. They were like, I remember got a 1994, I had a check for $120,000 and, uh, oh it was the culmination of 18 months worth of work. And, uh, boy, I mismanaged that, you know, from a tax perspective and, you know, I had to, had to, had to figure that out and about a year later, I didn't have a mentor <clears throat> and I didn't think I had enough money to hire an attorney and an accountant to help me sort that stuff out. I quickly learned over time sure. um, that, that I needed to do that. But I mean, I remember, I remember I sold a piece of land. It was 164. It was a, it was a quarter section of land up in, in Hamilton County. And, and I got a massive commission check. Well, to me, it was a massive commission check. I think most people would be massive. massive. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and that's, that's a couple billion dollars worth of transactional volume in 20, 30 years later. Um, uh, I've, I've, I'm, I'm better at it now. Um, but, uh, I remember that being pretty transformative for me and I, I gave family members money and I indiscriminately uh, spent money. I think I bought a Harley, uh, you know, I, I just did, I just didn't do the right things. I did put a lot of money in. And one of the things, good things I did with that money is I, I established two, uh, 529 accounts for children that I did not have, um, which you can do. And, uh. Because I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to, to, to uh, get married and have kids, and and uh, uh, so I was thinking ahead a little bit, and I did put money into some mutual funds, which I ultimately lost um, through more things that I learned over time, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, the real estate game was, you know, once again required me to be independent and resourceful, 
and um, you know, it, you know, the way I did it, I wasn't in a big brokerage house. I went backwards. I didn't start selling residential real estate with you know a Tucker or a Century Twenty One or a Remax or somebody that had a team full of people to kind of mentor me through the transactional process. I started selling big chunks of land. Um, just just went straight for the throat on real estate sales and, and uh, which is what a Marine would do, right? You know, uh, forget the small stuff. I'm, I'm hunting big game, right? I mean, I had to learn some hard lessons, <laughs> you know, never went bankrupt, never failed to pay my taxes or anything silly like that, but uh, just had to, I had to eat what I killed once in a while. And uh, that, that wasn't always, the best, but I learned. Yeah. So and what I, are some, I, what are some of those lessons? Yeah. What's some of the, what's some of the ones that come to mind? You know, um, just budgeting, um, managing time, managing expectations, uh, understanding the totality of the circumstances associated with a real estate transaction and what a big check means today. Again, I had indicated that was the culmination of approximately 18 months worth of work. Um, and so, what I do today, you know, I'm, I'm in slightly different, it's kind of the same, but I'm in real estate development now. I'm, we still do some transactional volume, but um, what I do today directly affects what I make 18 months or 24 months from now. Um, and so you have to be very strategic. You know, I always talk about um, tactics and strategy and, you know, day to day, we have to look at how we operate tactically. And, and I still sound like a Marine when I talk, my employees get tired of it, you know, but, uh, and then we have to think strategically as a business, how we manage our time and our money as it relates to that long sales cycle of 18 to 24 months. And so, um, that was really just kind of, a um, AIT for, uh, you know, for, for real estate brokers, if you will, you know, so. Right. Forgive, I, I, forgive, I, forgive me for not knowing though, how would you go about selling a big swath of land without buying it first as an independent realtor? I just don't know anything about this industry. <clears throat> well, you know, my buddy uh, who kind of mentored me in the real estate, Billy Beecham was, was uh, kind of brought me on board. Um, and he had been a broker chasing his, he, he had been a broker in Ohio. I'm sorry, in Michigan. He was an industrial broker. I think he, at the time he was making eighty thousand a year, and he left that job to come to Indianapolis to chase his dreams of being a police officer. And we were making thirty-two thousand dollars a year. And I remember sitting, you know, window to window in our police cars one day in Brightwood, you know, um, Indianapolis, after a gunfight, um, and. Uh, lamenting about what we made and for me i mean i was like gosh i was an enlisted man in the marine corps <laughs> this is yeah. fine i'm doing okay everything's fine you know um i had been living in a mobile home <laughs> and so you know i didn't really notice any different but he had come from eight, making 80 grand he's almost one third the salary now and so um he kind of mentored me through that but we decided we were just going to big game we treated every um every opportunity like a homicide dossier literally we we would go out in the beginning of the year when when you know um there was snow on the ground and not a lot of stuff was selling and we would investigate there wasn't google maps and aerial photos and you know, ubiquitous online open source statistics that you could curate about a property. So we, we spent time creating kind of a workup or a, 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 you know, a dossier on a potential piece of property. Was it saleable? Was it in the path of development? Was it served with utilities? How deep were they? How big were they? What were they made from? What was in line from a zoning and ordinance standpoint? And, uh, and we took those dossiers and we mailed them out to a hundred farmers and, and, you know, 70 of them showed us the door, you know, get out of my living room. We got into 20 or 30 living rooms. We did 10 or 12 listings and we sold one or three a year and they were massive. And so it was just a, a matter of statistics and tenacity. And it's, it's very Marine Corps. It's, it's very kinetic in your face. I'm going to do this. 
So, I mean, if I can tell Marines or service members at all, you know, that the number one skill that they possess, that they have no idea probably that they possess is tenacity and knowing I can fit one more thing in the sea bag. <laughs> There's one more thing that will always go into this sea bag. And I don't care where I'm going. Drop me in a field. I will make it happen. Right. Um, and so that's that's what, you know, especially Marines possess, but all service members possess. Um, and I was in the Army for a short period of time as well, too. So but uh, um, yeah, I mean, the Marine Corps prepared me well for adversity. If I were going to message to <clears throat> veteran entrepreneurs, I would say root yourselves strongly in the service business industry right now, if you can. If you're not in it, get in it um, or figure out a way to be a part of it. Find yourself holding less um, risky real estate if you're in real estate. And if you're in a business that's modeled after things that struggle during a recession, consider immediate change. Um, and um, if you're in a business that does well during a recession, double down. Um, and uh, that would be my message right now um, to veteran entrepreneurs um, and veterans alike. If you're looking to get into business and you're looking how to leverage that can-do attitude that you have, consider the service industry. And by, what I mean by that is, you know, um, uh, you know, we've been through this before. This is not new. It shouldn't even be scary. It's the world we live in is cyclical. Um, it's going to go up and down. You can make money in both, you know, at, at times commercial real estate is not going to be great and residential or multifamily residential is going to be great. And, and just the opposite is true as well. In, in times of, of, of recession, you know, combined with inflation, Cash is going to be king, um, and uh, you know your dollar will, uh, they say, go further. But in you know, is that going to be the case uh, um, when nobody when nobody has it? <laughs> you know, and so um, <clears throat> I would really encourage people to get into the service industries. You know, uh, you know, plumbing continues to be a necessity. Electric electricians still need they're still needed, you, you know, um, people are still going to be needed to clean, but the vacation industry, maybe not as much. The hotel industry, maybe not as much. Um, you know, you can sort of forecast what the service industry is going to be. They're going to be needed that, that regardless of whether we're in recession or not. And, and so that would be my message to veteran entrepreneurs. Thank you so much, Scott Baldwin, for being with us today. Uh, America's Warrior Partnership appreciates your service and your leadership as a businessman. I hope all the entrepreneurs who come and visit this page today uh, find something really cool for their business and um, are able to use it. Please feel free to reach out to me or to any of our speakers um, by checking out the information below.